everyone, and welcome to take four of our parent-student meeting for pre-algebra and for Algebra 1. This is the first year that I have actually done a parent meeting by video rather than taking time during, the first per during our first class meeting, so I'm finding it a little bit challenging trying to do this, but I think it's definitely for the best. I can give you some more information. You can watch this meeting at your, own, at your own speed, in the comfort of your own home. You've got your drink beside you. You've got your student sitting right next to you, where you can be totally focused so that you're able to comprehend and really take in everything that I have to tell you. And this way, we don't waste any class time on parent meetings. And it's wasted not because we don't need to, have, need to talk so that mom and dad understand exactly what the class is like, but Simply put, we only have 32 days when I get your kids face to face. I want to be able to utilize that time as, as best as I can. So, thank you once again for joining me on this video. Let's go ahead and get started by praying. Father God, I thank you for your goodness to us. I thank you for the privilege that we have of teaching our children at home. Fathers, we begin a new year. I ask, Lord, that you would give to mom and dad, to grandma and granddad, or whoever it is that is the primary person responsible for teaching these kids this year. Father, I ask that you would give them insight and discernment into the way their student thinks, the way that they learn best, and that would you guide them and direct them as they do their best to teach these children that you have entrusted into their care. Father God, I also ask that you would give me wisdom as I have the privilege of being involved with them on a weekly basis. Father, help me to have eyes to see and ears to hear ways that I can teach differently or ways that I can just be available to, this kid, to these kids and to the parents. Father, I pray that you would bless our year and that you would bless this meeting time together. I thank you that you love us. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, boys, girls, and I shouldn't say boys and girls, I'll, I'll call you guys and girls in class. Did you know that even pirates have a need for algebra? Well, they really do. Think about it. They are always trying to find X. So, um, you should all have with you, if you don't, pause the video and go and get it. You should have your class packet. You should have a notepad and pencil beside you. And if I were you, I would get a drink, because I've even got a drink. And some of you kids have already taken the material in this packet and you've put it in your notebook. That's great. Bring your notebook. But we're going to go through this paperwork and just have something to refer to. I know that some of you have already gone through your packet somewhat in detail because I've been getting questions from you. I also know from experience that it's just been a couple of days since it was given to you and it may just still be sitting in your in-basket waiting to be worked on. Now, I do not enjoy having someone read paper to me, so I'm not going to do that to you. I'm going to trust you to read the material, but I do want to go through and highlight things that are of key importance and make sure that you're getting the meat of the information that I've given to you. The first page is your synopsis of the class, whether it is Algebra 1 or Pre-Algebra. I'm sorry, I've apparently got some sort of allergies going on that are driving, my, driving me a bit crazy. What we have that is very different about this course, that is so important for, it, for you to understand from the beginning, is that it's sort of turned upside down from what we have done with traditional classes. I've been teaching up here at the co-op for a few years. I've tutored many years ago in the Collin County Math Lab. Um, I've tutored one-on-one -on -one with people, and that seems to be a way that works really, really well, at least for me. If you can get some good one-on-one -on -one instruction, then you can go through and say, oh, I understand this, 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 but I'm stuck right here. Will you show me how to figure out what this problem is? And the way our traditional instruction has been where we come in and we try and throw all of this teaching material at the kids who are busy zoning out or they already understand that, we don't have a real good use 
of class time, in my opinion. And that's especially a problem when you're trying to teach something like junior high or high school math one day a week in a shortened term when you only have 32 hours that you can teach the kids. And I had the opportunity to visit with some teachers at North Garland High School who teach some of the AP upper level science and math classes. And they were talking about how they had transitioned their classes or were in the midst of transitioning some of their more difficult classes to total online lecture, online instruction, to where the kids would come to class already having studied the new material. And they would take that class time, that limited class time they had with the teachers, and the teacher would say, okay, let's work through some of these problems. Let's see what the difficulties are. Let's make sure that we know how to apply the material that you've already been studying. And I know that's true because I've taken physics and chemistry and some of those harder classes, some of the harder math classes, and you can spend half an hour working one single problem. So there's a whole lot more value, to my mind, of, of the kids being able to say, okay, help me figure out how to work these problems instead of me just saying up here, okay, let me teach you that 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 when you get at this level of math. So what I have been able to do for this year, it's been a, pro been a process, but this year if you look at your synopsis of the class, you're going to see that all of the lecture time is done at home via YouTube videos that I've created. I've already created a bazillion YouTube videos that are out there. I'm reworking them for a, for a number of reasons. But the, the textbook that you have, you know, there are anywhere from seven to ten sections of material in each of 12 or 13 or 14 chapters. So there's a whole bunch, over a hundred different sections of material that each of, your, each of your kids are going to be covering this year. There is no way on God's green earth that anyone can get up and teach a hundred sections of material to kids, answer questions, um, do, do quizzes, collect homework. No way that that can be done in a way that your kids can grasp the material when you only have them for 32 days. So what I'm doing is all of those videos are going to be out there. The, the, the kids will access the YouTube link that I'll give to you. They'll sit and watch the video if they need to. Sit and watch the video. They'll have their homework assignment. They'll begin to attempt their homework. Then they come into class on Friday and I can say, hey kids, how did it go this week? Was this a pretty easy week? Was it a hard week? What specific questions do you have for me? And they'll say, okay, I'm having a problem with question number 19. They're talking about the distributive property and I'm having diff and I can't get this problem. I tried it three times and it's driving me nuts. So I said, oh, okay. So what I'll do is I will take the questions that the kids bring to class and I'll say, okay, here is how you work this problem. Here's where you went wrong. And oh, by the way, see this particular negative sign here? Drop it a negative is something that they're going to throw at you all the time. That's a common way for people to trip up. And then the kids will say, oh, that makes a lot better sense to me now. And after I've answered their questions, Sometimes there'll be questions that can last all period long. Sometimes, probably particularly at the beginning before the kids get comfortable with me, I'll come into class and say, okay guys, what questions do you have? And it'll be the, you know, how you don't dare meet somebody's eyes because if you look at them and you meet their eyes, either you're on a committee or you have to do something or you get to pray. Um, nobody's going to be meeting my eyes because they don't want me to say, hey Johnny, do you have a question for me? That's okay. If no one has questions, believe me, I can teach five hours straight just off the top of my head because I know what the material is about. I know the, the key pieces, uh, the, the key points that I want to communicate to the kids for each section. So that's how this class is going to work. Um, homework, I'm going to do uh, send you some more information both on on homework and on how you set up your notebook because I don't want to just really take a bunch of time right now talking about homework. But the reason that you do homework in upper level math classes is so that you understand how 
to apply the material that you've been learning in the book. So the way that we're structuring homework here is kids do it at home. They have access immediately to the solutions, to the answers, which is why I required you guys to buy the teacher manual because either you or your student or the both of you together are going to be checking your homework. Now that doesn't mean that you have to teach them. They're going to go through and do their homework and they're going to say, okay, here's problem number one and here's my answer. Here's problem number two, here's the work that I've done, and here's my answer. And then what they're going to do is they're going to get that, that answer key and they're going to say, oh, okay, I got an 18, that's correct. Okay, I got a 17 and a half. I missed something there. Let me go back and try and rework that problem and figure out what I did wrong. After they have worked the problem, reworked it, if they can't figure out what to do, they're going to write themselves a note that says, Ask Miss Betsy. And they're going to ask me about that in class, or if they're really involved in their homework, they're going to say, Hey, Mom, I don't have a clue how to do this. Is it all right with you if I text Miss Betsy? She said I can do that. And you, you're going to say, Yes, of course because you all have my personal cell phone number. If you will text me, or if you'll have your student text me, seven in the morning till 10 at night, and, you know, please, on, please honor, my, honor my nighttime hours. But I'll get back with you and I'll be able to explain to the kids, okay, let's work this together, here's your problem. And they're gonna say, oh, cool, now I can go ahead and go on to the next problem. So homework isn't busy work, homework is a tool that they use to learn the material. So they complete their problems, you know, they do all of their work. The, the homework grade is pretty much a reward for working. They're going to get 100. They're going to get 10% off for that if you don't sign it. They're going to get an additional 20% off if they have not done all of the problems, checked it, and corrected it. But I'll tell you more about that in the next video. But the key thing right here is homework grade is not a huge percentage of your school grade. Um, that comes mostly from tests, but the homework grade is a, is a reward for the kids actually having learned the material. Things that are really, really, really important to, um, to know and to understand is that you've got to stay current on your class. All of us parents me, everybody, all the kids here, we've all delayed and procrastinated and put off doing something until right at the end, whether it's cleaning your house, uh, cleaning your car, mowing the yard, doing your, your history assignment, doing your math assignment. And we wait until the very last minute, we're trying to cram everything into one thing, everything into a small amount of time. And maybe you can do that for a history class. You know, we call it read and regurgitate. You know, you read it, you learn it, you spit it out for the teacher on the test, but then you sort of dump it. You've, you've forgotten everything that you've learned because you didn't really learn it. You just crammed it into your short-term memory. You can get away with that in history because what you've studied about the French Revolution is different from what you study about World War II. You can't do that in math. So it's important that you not try to cram, that you be consistent, that you stay on top of your material because that will make it so that you can keep all of your math together. Because everything that they're going to be doing this year in pre-algebra or in Algebra 1 is dependent on the foundation that you have already laid for them in their low, lower level math classes. So make sure you stay current with your homework. Make sure that you work really hard. Don't, Mom, Mom and Dad, don't make them sit there and do their math for three hours at a time. They're going to zone out and it's going to be be unproductive. The best thing, in my opinion, that you, that you can do is don't have them work longer than 45 minutes at a time. You know, have them work for a while, get up, get a break, go do something else. Also, remember to utilize me. I am here to walk alongside you to help you as you're training your kids. Um, God's given me an ability to troubleshoot algebra. 
I can sit down with your kids and pretty much instantly say, oh, this is where the problem is. And I don't have to go back to the book and figure out what to do. Because for this narrow little band of math, I enjoy it and I understand it. And I can communicate it with your kids because God's given me that ability. So use me. I'm not here just to teach your kids on Friday. I'm here to help them to master the material. Okay. The second piece of paper that you have <clears throat> is this um, attendance testing and homework policy. I want you to make sure that you read this completely and that you understand. <coughs> I'm so sorry about my throat. <clears> throat> I want you to understand a couple of things about my classes. What I've found is that there is really no middle ground for the grades that the kids get in my classes. Now, what I know you're looking for as a parent and what I'm looking for as a homeschool parent is, um, is that our kids perform to the best of the ability, to the best of their ability, as God has enabled them. I understand there are kids who are A students, and there are kids who are C students. Now, if my child brings home a C in a class that I know that they haven't been studying on, that's not acceptable. But if my kid brings home a C in a class that I know they've been working their tail off, that's all I'm looking for. I'm looking for my kids to perform to the best of their ability. But as a general rule in my classes, I've got my kids get A's and B's. In my math classes they get A's and B's or they don't succeed. And by don't succeed I mean they fail the class. And what I have found is that parental involvement in your, in your child's math education is really, 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 honest, truly, a key indicator of success. Now that doesn't mean that you're teaching your, teaching your kids the math. It's my responsibility to teach your kids the math. That's the gifting that God has given to me, but it's your responsibility as parents to make sure that your student stays current because most of the kids are not going to want to keep up with their math. But if you're involved with them and I perform my responsibility, then together your kids are going to come out saying, hey, it's May and I really didn't hate that class too much and Miss Betsy's a pretty cool teacher. Okay. Um, I expect my kids to be on time for class. I'm going to start at 10 o'clock or I'm going to start on the hour, and I expect them to be courteous to me and respectful of time and not come sauntering in late. But I also understand the really wacky schedules that some of us have as homeschool parents or as ministry families, and I'm not going to take off. There is no penalty if you're not in class as far as the grade goes. The way that penalty kicks in is your student misses the opportunity for one-on-one -on -one interaction, one-on-one -on -one tutoring help with me. So. That's how I handle attendance. Um, there is description here of, of how I grade homework, how it has to be turned in, penalties that, that are assessed if, if the homework is late. You don't want your math homework to be late because if your homework is late, you're behind the ball, behind the curve on your understanding. Um, we don't have time to administer tests in class. We're going to have quizzes in class which are nothing to be afraid of. The quizzes will cover material that the kids have done on in their homework that they've had an opportunity to ask questions about and that we've reviewed in class before they have a short little quiz. So the quiz is no big deal. The quiz is also pretty much a reward grade for our students based on the effort that they've put forth at home. But tests, you guys are going to be taking those tests at home. You're going to, you're going to have your, your child bring them into me, and I'll grade them, and I will manage grades. This second page here, the one that is that I just showed you, the attendance, homework, and testing policy, a couple of you signed this in uh, during orientation. But I need, this is the page that ARC has asked us to provide this year. I need to have parent signature, student signature, and then I'll sign it, just so that you guys know ahead of time that this is what I expect for homework, this is what I expect for tests. I'm a homeschool mom, I've said that before. I do have a degree in math, um, but 
I'm a homeschool mom. I understand schedules. I'm flexible and I'll work with you. But this is what we're looking for. If you follow these parameters here and these guidelines here, you're going to have a much better chance of being successful in my class. Let me see. <clears throat> okay, the next page that you have is your course syllabus. Two-page course syllabus that describes what we're going to be doing, you know, just the general framework for the class. The things that are most important to remember here are that you must have the teacher edition and the student edition. Every student has to have their own book to work from. If some of you have not yet bought a teacher's edition and you want to partner together somehow, it needs to be someone who's a good friend of yours where you can get access to those answers every single time you need them because that teacher's edition is an important tool to help you learn as much as you can from, uh, from the course. Kids also need to have a binder that's at least two inches. They need to have tabs and they need to understand that I want their paper, their, uh, their homework to be turned in either on hole punched blank paper, on hole punched grid paper, or hole punched loose leaf paper. None of this spiral notebook here that you have, you know, where you sort of, oh, you run into class, class and you rip them out and then you sort of throw them into me like this. That's just sort of a little OCD thing that I have going on here. And it makes, and it's disorganized for them. Part of what I'm going to be doing with the notebook for them this year is helping them to, to keep the material organized so that they can go back and review their math material so that they're just constantly solidifying and strengthening their knowledge base. So, no spiral notebooks. Let's see, that's on the second page of your syllabus. It explains to you that 55% 50 of the grade comes from tests, 20% of it comes from quizzes, 10% is notebook, 10% is homework completion, and there is a very easy in-class final quiz that also is a component of that grade. I'll explain more about that grade, the grading system, when I do the homework video for you. Okay, the next thing that I would like you to look at, let me see. Any of videos work? Free work resources. We have these two checklists. One of these is a homework checklist. One of these is a quiz checklist. And what these pages are, are these these are condensed versions of the assignment calendar that I've given to you that you will love if you haven't already seen it. Now, you might be looking at this and it says, okay, Algebra 1 Homework Checklist. Homework 1, Sections 1 to 4, due date September 13th, and there's a blank space for a grade, and you're going, oh, my word. Uh-oh, over here there's quizzes, and there's a blank space, and it says, grade, oh, my word, I didn't think I was going to have to be grading these. You don't. I'm going to take care of that. Now, you partner with me with the homework grading, which will which we'll continue to explain later. But this is just a, a condensed assignment sheet for, for you guys so that you can see, okay, I'm going to be gone the week of October 18th. What do I need to have? Well, I'm going to miss this quiz. I'm going to have this homework that has to be turned in. So that's what the dates are for. The blank spaces that have the grade, that's for you to have, your child to have, in his or her notebook, when they get their homework back and they say they got a grade of 100 on homework 3, they write that 100 in. They got a grade of 95 on their quiz, they've written that in. So this is just a record, an easy record of grades where you mom and you student can say, oh, okay, looks like I'm doing just fine without having to go through the cumbersome grading system, a uh, grading website that we have uh, through the ARC co-op right now. So this just keeps all your grades together. Let's see. Like I said, having this summarized together lets you know now, today, whatever day it is, you know, Sunday the 24th, uh, 25th, I can look here and say, oh, 
I already know my assignment for April 25th, so there's nothing that's going to be sprung on you, you know ahead of time. You can use this short assignment calendar to say, okay, I'm going to be out of town, I've got a speech today, or we're going to go on a mission trip over spring break, we're going to go on a backpacking trip in Alaska, and we're going to be gone for three weeks. How in the world am I going to manage my math? You've already got it laid out for you. Now the last thing that you have in your packet is you have two assignment calendars. You have one that is in color, that one's for your student, and you have one that's grayscale, and that's for the parent. This, they're identical calendars with the exception of the coloring. And I'm giving the kids the colored one because it helps me sometimes if I can see highlights and say, oh, okay, I've got to turn in my homework. Oh, I need to take a test. Now, if, if you haven't flipped through this assignment calendar yet, go ahead and do this because it's a really cool tool. It took me a good while to get this prepared, but what I've done is I have totally laid out your assignments for your child for the entire year. This is a guide. This is not a thing for you to say, oh my word, I have to do this on the 10th and this on the 11th and this on the, thir on the 16th. I understand homeschool families and I understand that you're going to sketch, structure your study time in a manner that suits your family best. But this gives you a guideline. I haven't put any math in on the weekends. And if you structure, you know, if you pretty much follow this structure here, you're going to be able to keep up with your math, you're not going to be too stressed, and you're not going to be thinking, oh no, it's Thursday night, I've got to put in three sections of math before I go to class on Friday. Because if you do that, guys, you're not going to be able to learn the material. There are a couple of things that I want to point out. First, because we're going to be doing the videos ahead of the time, you learn new material, before you come to class, I tried to make a point with all of you moms and dads and, and with all of you kids. Every one of you has a math assignment that is due when you come to class. You can, and those videos will be available for you not later than September 2nd. This is the Algebra 1 calendar. You have four sections of math that you need to do before you come to school. And you have the videos that will go along with that. You have the assignment that will go along with that. Then, when you come into class, here it says that we're going to have the welcome and, re and the review of the syllabus, and then we're going to do a Q&A over sections 1.1 through 1.4. So what that means is I'm going to say, hey guys, welcome, you know, let me tell you something funny about me. You introduce yourselves to me. Now, go ahead and get out your homework that you've already worked on. Did any of you have difficulty with anything on that homework? And they're going to say, mm, I don't understand this, um, I didn't know I was supposed to do that, um, I forgot to do it, or no, everybody understands everything. Then in class, I'm going to emphasize and highlight key pieces of information from that homework. And then I'm going to say, okay guys, you did your homework ahead, but I'm not collecting it now. You had this extra teaching time, this extra reinforcement time for me. You take that homework home with you and make any corrections that you need to. Because you can see right here on your first highlight, homework number one is not due until the following week. So the way that homework is structured, you study it at home, you come to class, the homework is due the next week. Now, I know somebody out there, probably several somebody's going to say, I understood it, it was easy, can I turn it in as soon as I come to class? Absolutely. Turn that homework in just as soon as you're ready to, but understand that you have the whole following week to come away from the time that you've spent face-to-face -face with me saying, oh, now I understand why I missed 15 problems there was, I was dropping my negative sign. Or, oh, I was multiplying instead of adding, or, oh, I was using negative exponents, you know, whatever the problem was. So that's the structure of the class. You study at home the new material and you begin to attempt as much of that homework as you can. We reinforce it in class. You have the opportunity to make corrections the next week. While you're still doing your new material, then you turn the homework in. Okay? 
I'd like everyone to go ahead and turn over to the December calendar. And this is when it's probably pretty good that we're doing this meeting by video because you can't get your rotten tomatoes and throw them at me. Okay. Highlighted down at the bottom, the text is slightly different for pre-algebra and for Algebra 1, but this I am going to read to you. Parents and students, it is not possible to take a multi-week break from Algebra 1 and successfully complete the course. For Algebra 1, there is a significant amount of work, including a test, due when classes resume on January 10th. I'm offering a voluntary review class at my home on Friday, January 3rd, to help your student navigate the work assigned over the break. Please text to reserve your spot. Guys, I'm sorry, there is no way that we can take three or four weeks out at Christmas of a math class. You've got assignments that have to be done during that break. Um, at the bottom of December, it says this is additional work to complete while art classes are on break. And then when you move on to January, I'm going to read to you again, voluntary review class. Uh, this is specific to Algebra 1. Equations and graphs of straight lines are foundational topics in algebra. The subject material is important enough for me to schedule a complimentary review class during my time off. I highly recommend that your child attend. If at all possible, please text to reserve your spot. January 3rd, co-op's not back in session, but that's at Friday. I'm having a voluntary session at my home. Now you've got to get out to my home, um, and nobody has to come. If nobody calls, then I don't have to work on that Friday. And then on the 5th, it says, please make sure you've completed all your work listed on your December calendar. This calendar is your lifeline. It tells you exactly what you need to do to stay current with math. Again, I apologize that you've got to be doing work over break, but that's just the nature of the beast. You know ahead of time. You know that you can work ahead. You know that you can structure that math as it best fits your family. But you're going to have to be doing some work over break, and I apologize for that. But you will be a stronger math student for that. And when you get to the point where you're taking your SAT or um, your ACT test, you're going to have good, solid math skills that will stand you in good stead because you have worked consistently and diligently to build a solid foundation. Um, I'm sitting here, standing here thinking if there's anything else that I'd like to add to this video, and I, I really don't think there is. Like I said, I'll, I'll give you some more specific detailed information about how that homework works, and I'll show you, talk to you some more about how I want that notebook to look and why I want it to look that way. And I'll also, when I come back, give you, let you see a video of what I want the homework to look like for. Now, those of you who know me know that I'm really struggle, that I really struggle and that I'm challenged when it comes to administrative type, type stuff. But something that I did when I went back to school to get a second bachelor's degree and I, and I got it in math, um, I built huge notebooks in all of my math classes. <coughs> and I kept, um, I kept the tests, I kept my class notes, I did my homework. I'd go through those in review, I'd highlight, I'd write myself notes, and I applied myself diligently to, to learning that material. And I got straight A's in my math class in, in my college degree. I, I, I do have a 4.0 from my college level math, but it's not because um, God just dropped out all of that material into my mind. He's given me an ability in that area, but I worked really, really hard to do that. And kids, some of you, God's given you a natural gifting in math, and it's going to come easier to you than it is to maybe to your brother or your sister, or maybe it is to your best friend. So take advantage of those areas that God gifts you in. But other brother, you know, other student who's a little bit scared about math, you can still succeed, but you have to be determined to work hard and to apply yourself and use some of the, use some of the study skills that mom and dad and friends and that I will be trying to share with you because uh, this just comes to mind right now. I don't know the reference for it, but whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. And that's a, a verse from scripture. It just applies to every, every area of our lives. Those, 
those things, those opportunities that we have to work. We need to apply ourselves and to be diligent to use the opportunities that God gives us. So anyway, blessings to you. My door, figuratively speaking, is always open to you. Text me, email me. Please don't call me and leave me voicemails. If you get as far as a voicemail, you'll hear, you'll hear me saying, please don't leave me a voicemail because I really don't check them. Uh, if you try to communicate with me and you haven't heard back from me within a few hours, get back with me again because it means it's rolled, the email's rolled off my front page or it means I haven't been on it or it means I have one of the other 95 plates that I'm trying to keep spinning and you know, I'm paying attention to them. I'm really here to be available to you. I'm here to enjoy this time with your kids. Please utilize me. Um, something that I didn't say, kids, I started off with that, with that lame joke about, you know, even pirates need algebra because um, they're the ones who are always trying to find X. Be prepared. I'm going to start each class with lame jokes. So if you're a lame joke person, you can go ahead and bring those in as well. Um, if you're not a lame joke person, just groan, you know, it just makes me smile if you guys groan at my jokes. And I look forward to seeing you shortly. Thank you.